underutilized and underappreciated and often forgotten in a lot of different van conversions. We know that half of the store is going to be above our bed and therefore exposed to our main living space. Just about here is where the bed frame is going to be but the other half is going to be under the bed and in the garage, which calls for two very different designs. It is early Monday morning. We just published yesterday all about this incredible ceiling, and we are already feeling the time crunch to complete this project because there is so much we need to sort out this week. First, we need to decide what material we're even going to use to cover this whole thing. It needs to be lightweight and we need to be able to attach things to it. We need some sort of storage up here, but that means Lottie's gonna need to 3D model some sort of a shelf. It needs to be modular, it needs to be stylish, it needs to be lightweight, and it needs to be able to attach to the material that we still don't know what we're using. We need to sort out some sort of a fabric. It can't be as dark as the one we just used as the ceiling, but it needs to kind of match the vibe. It's this half that will be kind of where our wheels are on the bikes. So that needs to be a durable material because it will likely be hitting the wheel every now and then are getting muddy. If we could have some sort of a netting or some sort of a holder for storage stuff. This is a dry fit number 1048. Always trying to make the Sunday upload. But look at that Friday night. I'm still going. 3D printers running overnight 24 seven. This is definitely on a bigger scale of 3D prints I've ever done. Now we just need to figure out how to pull it off. What's up everybody, it's Monday morning, we had a sleep and I'm ready to keep going on this crazy project. I'm going to be paneling it up so that needs to be insulated in the first place because this is a massive heatsink. The temperature difference outside and inside is what causes the problems because the cold metal from outside is the same metal that goes inside and as you sleep next to it, it cools you down all the time. This is asking for a good storage opportunity. I'm gonna 3D print the heck out of it. So that's pretty questionable what to use as a material for this back door because the plastic seem to work pretty well. My problem is that I'm gonna be doing a cutout here and then I need to have something to attach the cutouts into. That's why plywood kind of seemed to be a little bit better for gluing and making all the framing and then attaching inserts to it and screwing to. This seemed to make a little bit more sense. and criticize well that could actually actually quite fit that's all weight saving techniques this is just the thinnest plywood does the job in the surface but here when I'm actually attaching the 3d printed pockets I want to have a bit of a stiffness and more meat to chew into with a screw. <laughs> Adding a frame. Yeah, it's so easy to do these things. We just clamp them, go for a break. In 30 minutes I take it off. A clamping masterpiece. <laughs> clamping is an art. <laughs> Storage up here. 
I'm gonna 3D print the heck out of it. This technique has been a game changer. When I need to convert something two dimensional in a 3D, having a ruler as a reference and then just taking a good two dimensional photo. Bang, here is my reference photo. I'm just so stoked about this model. This 3D model took me about an hour and I think it's pretty good. Because I have small 3D printers, I knew it needs to be modular, smaller pieces that connect together. I like these joints because it gives me options to replace one part or just have a different colors. Well, this is my first essentially as a proof of concept and I'm pretty pleased. I decided to print horizontally uh, these little pins and then it just connects like this to keep the front edge really straight and support it. Now I can scale it up for the lower below the bed pocket and I can be tweaking sizes whatever I need. This is amazing. We'll be printing around the clock this week because some of the individual prints take over 17 hours to do, so we need to start immediately. In the meantime, it's all about pre-drilling holes and drilling holes directly into the back doors and then adding some rivets. I like that the two pockets are different sizes. Right? That's I kind like of one's like bigger, that's one smaller. Last minute decision. Look at that. So interesting. Once the fabric is on. Proper springtime when we can have everything open. You guys can just be in and out and chilling. Walking around the land together. Oh, it's Thursday morning and uh, we spent with Margaret three days gathering all the material to be able to pull Sunday video. Look at that. Look at that gap all around. This is pretty good seal. I had to give it a bit of a tolerance because as the door is gonna move a little bit in the hinges and when driving, I don't want to have any struggles hitting the panel every single time. Mm. I'm keeping the overhang to really tightly close against the other panel that's gonna be here. Full on in the cold days, you feel a breeze blowing from there. This will block all of that wind coming through. That is so neat. Because it's Thursday, this is our big victory because now that we know how to do this door, we can replicate that quickly and we can move on to the bigger phases, which are insulating so we don't get any condensation in here, covering part of the door with this cool new fabric. This is part of our collection process. And we were able to kind of spitball last night when we were falling asleep how we're gonna approach this bottom half, but I'm gonna save that to chat about a little bit later. All right, so it's officially time to start door two, which means starting with a template and cutting out the exact shape from the four millimeter plywood. Have I told you about this cool tool I started making? You remember me always grabbing the shapes and transferring them all over this van? and I can perfectly transfer this whole shape and it's better and faster fitting than trying to make it on a CNC.
Oh, this is a dry fit number 1048, just to let you know. And all of these, he's lining up to be exactly symmetrical. And yay, time for more drilling. In there. <laughs> this is such an easy step to do. And it just makes the result so much more professional. Everything on rivets, on a thread. At the end of the day, this feels amazing. Getting out of there, make some fire. It's a mess here, excuse that. But we're happy. <laughs> Clear this all out so the grass can come in. Hey, don't tease him. He likes pizza too. He does like pizza. Both panels were fitted on the rivets, beautifully set. Uh, all the holes are cut out and all the 3D prints fit. Wow! Storage needs to be utilized, obviously, so this will be it. Now, the last missing piece is taking care of this bottom part. So because bike's gonna be hitting this door with the front wheel, we need something resistant, which is this mill, one mil sheet of rubber. Then we're gonna have these webs, these bungee webs for uh, attaching cargo to motorcycles and we're essentially copying and improving the same concept we had before in our previous van because this was amazing storage. With that outdoor shower this will protect the bottom of the panel which is a huge thing. So this panel now is 3.6 kilos, so together we are around 7.2. Is it worth it? To me, absolutely every single gram is worth it. Because this well insulated back door, fabric and utilized all the space inside of the door, 100% worth it. That's insane. Look, I even have a little servicing hedge here. <laughs> now it's the last time we're going to see this without fabric. We're actually doing two fabrics. The lighter one up top and then the darker one on the bottom. The textures match too, which is such a bonus. Okay, let's spray. Okay, flip it. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see. <laughs> That's what we were creating here the whole time. There it is. Pretty freaking cool. That is nothing. That was worrying us so much. Yeah, it's nothing. It's okay, it's okay, joint. That's amazing, joint. Bunny, first door is a mega success. Mega, mega. Mega success. Okay, wait, wait, before we go, can you hold it up for the camera? I can hold it up. I want to see, I also want to see like standing back. I love it. I absolutely love it, Bunny. Good job. <laughs> it is 8 p.m. on Friday. This was our goal for the day and it's such 
a huge victory. The result is Doesn't move for a car coming in. My land. <laughs> <laughs> Go around me. Three D printers running overnight, twenty four seven, past week. I definitely started printing right on Monday. And now look at it, how easily plywood converts in such a beautiful product with just a contact glue and a fabric. Wow. It is Saturday morning. We thought we were ahead of the game. Because we're winging all these details as we go. <laughs> we don't have a concrete plan because no. I, I need to think about a problem deeply and the deepest way is actually working on it. <laughs> That's how we always I bring know. the best out of us. <laughs> and we're like, okay, if we're going to be able to pull this off so easy, it'll be done by Wednesday. And then we go down the rabbit hole of what this project really demands. It's all <laughs> worth it. But it's still Saturday. I'm stressed again about pulling off the video. Stressed. Hey, stressed. Okay, <laughs> this is a healthy stress that keep us going. Otherwise, we would be lazy watching Netflix shows. <laughs> <laughs> Accountability is important. That's why we say we push it for Sundays. It's a good goal. It's healthy for us. We glued this rubber mat down. So now we're just waiting for the 3D prints that will hold the net into place. We spray painted all the boards we need to be matte black, that's great. Oh, all the remaining parts are still printing, so they're, been, they're gonna be done probably Sunday afternoon. Oh God. But everything else can be pretty much assembled together and just enjoy the finished product. Putting in the pens. I wish to have kids now, they would love this. The assembly. So cool. When all of the pins are in, this becomes like one product. Just one thing there. Look what just came out of the printer! These are what Lottie designed to hold the net into place. And there's two holes for the screws. Was I up until three in the morning editing? Yes. Is the video done? No. And an unexpected tragedy had hit us because one of our prints failed and it threw us behind on the entire door. But now we are moving on with the second door. We're still gonna try to upload today and we're just doing the install. This is definitely on a bigger scale of 3D prints I've ever done. <laughs> Always learning something new like these pins thickness of the walls to maximize the speeding time and minimum filament. It's these prints that have been delaying us. It's been brutal. This is very stiff. This is, <laughs> this is great. These are all the K-Flex cutouts from the other side. Now we can use them to finish off this insulation madness. We got 148 today, 
Sunday. And here's what we got for you. We got the custom cutouts, all looped around with this amazing fabric, spray painted bolts, 3D printed holders with this elastic for storage. Behind, we have rubber, so if it gets wet or if it gets dirty, we can just wipe it on down. Then we have this mega storage. This is under the bed. This is in the garage, so we can put all sorts of things in here. It is sturdy. This is not going anywhere. And then we have our Thunderbolt. This is a manual lock and unlock in case the batteries die. So if we ever feel like we get locked in, we can just pull. See it move? Easy. Then we have our line for what is above the bed. This is the mattress zone. I am so stoked about this. That was really fast executed from just since just Monday 3D printing. This is such a great utilized storage. I am so happy with the color choices because it just screams tech. The handle works great. It's so much sturdier than before. Oh, this is a maintenance uh, latch. <laughs> and then we have the switch. So the moment you open the door, you turn the lights on in a garage. if it even closes and fits. Oh! Yes! <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just would like to take this moment to thank you guys, all of you who made it all the way to the end. It's a pleasure. It's a dream for us to be making something like this and be able to inspire all of you to take these ideas and put them in use. There will be so many other unique and interesting projects like this when it comes to this van build. We are having so much fun really digging into our creativity. So we really hope you enjoy these videos because we love making them. Join us in the comment section. That's where we're spending the rest of the day. <laughs>